This is the backpack that I travel with. It's a Burton backpack. And today, I wanna to go over everything that's inside this guy. When you're a travel filmmaker, one of the things that's really hard is packing light. Most of the time you have clothes and you have gear and all of those have to fit into your bag. So today I wanna to go over what I have in my camera bag and why I have these specific things. Starting off with my camera, this is the Canon M6 Mark II. Originally I was using the ADD for a lot of my films, but I decided to downsize and get a camera that's much smaller that I can easily put into the front pouch of my backpack. I also have the kit lens, which is the 15 to 45, as well as the battery charger and the electronic viewfinder that comes with the camera. I specifically chose this camera because it shoots 4K and it also shoots 120 frames per second in 1080. For my B cameras, I have two GoPros, the eight and the seven. Oftentimes I'll stick these on the windshield of a car one facing towards the front of the car and one facing towards the rear so that I'm filming me and anybody else that's in the car with me. You'd be surprised at how many TV shows use GoPros for a lot of their shots. Sometimes the GoPros consist of the vast majority of their footage. This is the DJI Mavic Air. And this is the drone that I use specifically for traveling with. It's super small. And actually here, check this out. This is my phone and this is the Mavic Air. Both the drone and the controller fold down into a smaller profile so I can slide it into my backpack while I'm traveling. I store my media inside of this SD card holder, which holds multiple SD cards on both sides. And I mainly got it because it snaps together and it's waterproof and has a carabiner so I can hook it onto my backpack or my belt if I need to. For my camera support, I actually use the Joby Gorillapod. I hold it like this, or oftentimes I stick it on things and use it as a little tripod. This next one is my intervalometer, and I use this to plug into my camera to take time lapses. I actually prefer using the intervalometer over a lot of cameras built in time lapse features, because a lot of times it's just taking the video clip and turning the video frames into still images. And instead, with the intervalometer, you're able to get your full resolution raw images and edit them in Lightroom and then modify it to however you want it to look. And that gives you the, the greater flexibility in post. I would highly recommend using this over your camera's built-in feature. Just trust me on that one. I also use the Rode Video Micro for on top of my camera to capture audio. The most important thing you need to remember is you need to get good audio for your videos. You don't want to be messing around with post-production processing to try and fix your audio because a lot of times it makes your audio sound like you're in, in a tin can. So you want to get your mic nice and close, a good high quality mic that's the right mic for the job and that's this mic right here. One of the things I always take with me is a little air rocket. It's super important to have these because you don't want to be rubbing your lens with any cloths or anything like that because that'll actually scratch up your lens. Instead, you'll want to push off the particles with the air rocket. These are really cheap. They compress down really small and they'll keep your lenses lasting a really long time without damaging the glass. This is my cable organizer. This has everything that I need when I travel and it's got two different sections here. This back section can hold the tablet, but instead of holding a tablet, it's actually holding a USB power pack. This is really great because it has an AC plug that I can use to charge my laptop with. Unfortunately though, my big laptop can't be powered by that while I'm using it. So I have to charge up the laptop while I'm not using it. On the other side, I have one of my hard drives. This is a two terabyte Western digital hard drive. And then on the cable side, I have every single cable you could possibly imagine. I always take this thing with me because it helps me keep track of all my cables. They're all in one spot and if there's an empty spot that means there's a cable missing from the bag. So it's really helpful to have this here with me so that I don't forget anything. And the most important thing is staying hydrated. 
This is my Nike water bottle that I got from Meyer. Little trick, don't take that to an airport full of water. Instead, take it empty, and then when you get to the airport and you get through security, fill up your water bottle. Now, that sounds dumb, but some people forget that, oh, I have a water bottle full of water. Can't take it through security. So you go through security, and then you fill it up in a water fountain, take it on a plane with you, and then you can drink your water bottle while you're on the plane, and you don't have to worry about getting dehydrated in the plane. Most people don't know this, but inside of a plane, it's pressurized to a higher altitude than what most people are used to. So you actually get really dehydrated a lot faster. The last thing is, you gotta look good. These sunglasses I actually bought in Oceanside at a sunglasses shop. I don't know who makes them, but I really like the way they look. I'm a fan of the blue sunglass look. These sunglasses are polarized so that they cut out reflections from the sun. So that means when you're looking at water or any glass type materials, the sun will sparkle right off of that and really shine into your eyes. These sunglasses help cut that out. And sometimes you can actually see into the water a little better. But yeah, that's pretty much it. This whole mess of the table right now is uh, all of my gear. And this is kind of what I take with me in my backpack when I'm traveling. You don't have to get everything that I have. You could be a Sony person or a Nikon person. I think the most important thing when you're traveling with camera gear is to pack as light as possible. We live in a time today where our camera gear is tiny. When I was a kid, I had a camera that was probably about this big and the resolution was probably like 144 and that was awful. But now we have all this gear that's so tiny it can all fit into a backpack. I mean, look at this drone. Who would have thought drones would be small enough to fit inside of a backpack? But yeah, that's everything. So hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave a comment and give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you want me to review anything on the table and don't forget to keep making stuff.